Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some of the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So welcome to preview for Heike Strike Alternative and I'm here to tell you that while it may sound wacky and weird, it can definitely be wonderful too. So here's five things I think you need to know about it. Heike Strike Alternative is a two-player card game in which you play as World War II Axis and Allied forces who are dueling for control of battlefields using weapons from your deck. All of which happen to be women. You use action points on your turn to place cards in zones while also activating card abilities and meeting zone requirements to become victorious. Can you claim three battlefields for victory before you empty your deck for the third time and the game ends? Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, with a name like Heike Strike Alternative, you could be forgiven for assuming that this is either an anime show or a manga that you could read. And the truth is it's neither. In fact, I'm a little bit disappointed by this because I think it would have made for a really interesting kind of setting and world building. But what the game is about is essentially you versus your opponent recreating kind of World War II battles. Um, so you'll be playing with cards from your hands um, that are planes, artillery, um, naval vessels. Um, but here's the twist, um, all of which are women dressed as weapons. And how the game kind of describes this is that these Heike, as they call themselves, have mysteriously appeared in kind of these spirits have become weapons and they want to recreate old battles. And it's up to you to stop them by having them fight each other on the field. Um, yeah, so the game has this kind of interesting idea, but it's not really followed through anywhere else in the game. Um, I would like to have learned more about this or have this setting matter as you played, but it really doesn't. Um, there are some cool heroes and characters in here, and if you are a fan of kind of weaponry and stuff, you'll spot all of your favourites, um, which I think is kind of nice. Um, but overall, yeah, team, it's not really strong here. This feels far more like an abstract strategy game. Now, similar titles to this, however, um, I can't help but be reminded of Smash Up, the game in which you will play cards on particular zones till somebody has enough points to win. And this game follows that strategy very lovingly, but at two players. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? Well, Heike Strike Alternative is a two player card game in which you are dueling against your opponent. You're fighting over these zones in the board and the first person to win three of them emerges victorious. Um, so what happens is, is that you'll place either the Axis or the Allies um, and they have their own unique deck of cards. And you'll start with three action points and these control kind of everything you're going to do with your deck. So you can use action points to play the cards in your hand. They'll have a variety of different costs. Um, some cards will want more than action points. They'll want like a tactical point, which means you can discard two cards from the top of your deck into your discard pile to get that um, tactical point. Um, now, each of the cards themselves come with their own unique abilities um, and normally they're related to taking out your opponent's troops in specific circumstances, drawing cards, giving you bonuses. Um, and all of this come really matters, I suppose, when you're trying to duel for these spaces in the middle of the board. Um, so these zones have specific requirements you're going to have to meet. So, for example, they might say you will need two tanks, two planes and two boats. And what that means is you need to be able to have enough of those troops and hold that zone for an entire round before you can claim it. Um, so you can see why all this removing of troops and stuff is important so that, you know, you can stay ahead. Um, the other thing to note is that there are two other zones to fight over, and this is air superiority and sea superiority. And you don't win either of these, they just give you a bonus if you have it. So they're kind of good to get as well. So we have a deck of cards um, and what happens is the first time you go through it, you can shuffle it up and you'll gain a tactical point to use for the next round and for the next while. Um, and if you go through your deck again, you'll get an additional action point. So the further you go, the more stuff you get. However, the next time you go through your deck, the game will end. So you need to be careful, I suppose, about how many cards you're getting rid of versus how many cards you're trying to draw. 
Um, overall, this is a very straightforward and easy game to pick up and it's got a lot of back and forth to it. Thing three on the table. So yeah, I think this is the game people are going to ask you questions about when it's all set up simply because it looks so unusual. But the good news is it doesn't take up much space on the table and it's quick to set up and tear down. For two of us, it takes about 90 minutes to play and the rule book for this one is really, really good. Um, there wasn't a question I had, but the rule book couldn't answer for me. So bravo for good rule books. Um, replayability wise, well, I think this is the game that will reward repeat plays as you get to know the cards better. You can interact better with your opponent. Um, I have a prototype and I have the Axis and Allies deck, but um, the back of the box does seem to imply that you'll be able to build your own deck and that perhaps there might be other decks added in future. So that will add some more to the gameplay too. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? So I have a prototype copy, so nothing is entirely fixed in stone yet, but I do think the big aesthetic part of this game that will definitely be derisive is of course this art. Um, and this is simply this idea of women as weapons. And on the one hand, you might think about that as a concept and think that's kind of cool. But then when you draw a card and it's a girl dressed as a panzer tank, it's a different thing entirely, I think. Um, for me personally, I was a little dubious about the art when I started, but as you play the game, it's kind of, it's done in a very lighthearted and fun kind of way. Um, like some of the girls have motivational quotes and things as well that I found hilarious. And it just got to the point that I had to laugh at what I was drawing just because it's, it's, it's so absurd. Um, and so yeah, I didn't mind the art as much as I thought I would to be fair to it. Um, now, component quality wise, well, there's not much here, but the cards that are here are very nice. Those zones that are made are, are nice as well. If anything, it's all just in a slightly too big box. Overall, while I don't think this aesthetic will appeal to everybody, you've got to admit that it's fun and unusual. Thing five, is this game actually any good? So from its title and look alone, you may already have dismissed this game as just another anime card game. And it certainly looks like it fits that bill. However, I was pleasantly surprised to discover that underneath this odd idea of women anthropomorphized as weapons is actually a solid game. Um, I liked the two decks that we had, the Axis and Allies. I thought they paired together nicely. I really enjoyed the abilities on the cards themselves. They were kind of fun to try out and combine together to pull off all sorts of shenanigans. And the action point system really made your turns kind of tight and made you have decisions that felt like they changed the game. Um, they definitely added some kind of depth there. I really like the fact as well that as you go through your deck, you get slightly more powerful, but you also get closer to death. And I thought that was a nice idea. Um, so as much and all as I, I like all of this, this really is just a, a 1v1 game at the end of the day. You really are playing your opponent. However, I think the tools you've been given here to duke it out with your enemy is fun and interesting to play. Um, now, the art here is what either will sell or shame this game for you. Um, and, you know, that's a decision you're just going to have to make for yourself. For me, um, I kind of liked it in the end. I find it kind of cheery and funny. And there were far less panty shots than I was anticipating. Um, overall, this is a really great little game. And I think it's a very unusual addition to have to the 1v1 titles. So do I think you should have Heike Strike Alternative in your collection? I think if you're looking for an unusual 1v1 game with some really solid gameplay and a sense of fun and whimsy, then you should check this out on October 5th. You've been watching why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Heike Strike Alternative, I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.